Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 2, Breakdown and Reaction. Please note that this video does contain spoilers. The first thing that I want to bring up is that we got a new title sequence. I love how this builds off of the old one, and there's a lot of cool new imagery in this version. However, my kids and I are going to miss the old one where there's like this black snake weaving in through the gold sand. Honestly, it was my kids' favorite part, and they would like jump up and down whenever the black snake came onto the screen, and they'd be like pointing at it. Um, and it was just a fun moment. I liked how it sort of represented the influence of evil and the way that Sauron worms his way into your mind, as they've said. The new one is cool, though, so I think it'll take a little bit of getting used to. And I love the way that they added in the name at the end of the title sequence. It looked a lot more natural than it did for the first one. I also loved the opening sequence that had the visuals of the black goo spreading across the map, representing Sauron's influence. We can't hear the mountain. I loved seeing everyday dwarven life a little bit before this disaster strikes and Khazad Doom is plunged into darkness. So the earthquakes caused by Mount Doom's eruption have damaged the mountain, and now the stone singers are unable to hear it or communicate with it. And this for Disa is a really big problem. We also see the father son relationship between Durin the fourth and third strained in this episode, but it continues to be well written. Galadriel's vision. Galadriel has a vision in which she begins by planting seeds in front of Finrod's memorial in Linden. Celebrimbor strolls in and tells her that he has had an unexpected visitor, who she immediately understands to mean Halbrand. Halbrand's voice is then heard in her mind whispering her name, followed by these slithering root sequence which foreshadows Celebrimbor's death. Celebrimbor also speaks the ring verse in black speech as he is ensnared, which was very scary and cool. But then the best part of this sequence is that Celebrimbor, I think this vision it probably comes from Sauron, so this is really the voice of Sauron saying, are they not the seeds you planted? Basically blaming her for everything. And that was a very subtle but wonderful manipulation of Sauron at work. So after this vision, as you would, she begins to fear that Celebrimbor is in danger. She says some veiled evil closes in on Celebrimbor. It's also in this episode that we get to delve a little bit more into Galadriel's cosmic connection to Sauron, which, you know, is always going to be a highlight for me. She says, yes, he knows my mind and I know his. And this is why she thinks it has to be her to maybe defeat him. Galadriel is somehow deeply connected to Sauron. Because of the strength of his deception, she's unable to push him out of her mind. Gil-galad acknowledges this and says he won't allow her to face him alone again. It's also in this scene where they're having this conversation that she calls him Halbrand, and Gil-galad immediately corrects her to say Sauron, and I think that was a really good moment to, to show you that she's still struggling with this loss of this person who was really an ally to her. The way that he betrayed her was so strong and so powerful. Elrond is also really concerned about this as well. It's unclear if the ring is strengthening her connection to Sauron or if it's just enhancing her gift of foresight because she does see a glimpse of Sauron in Eregion. And it's the same clip that we're shown later on, so it suggests this was a future event. Galadriel also says, Since the wearing of this ring, I have felt perceived glimpses of the unseen world as dreams unbidden. She's also very concerned for Celebrimbor. Galadriel continues to worry about Celebrimbor and Eregion, speculating to Gil-galad that she thinks Sauron will return to make even more rings. This was an odd line because she's talking about how she feels Sauron needs rings to control others while she's wearing one of the rings. And while everyone insists, and it's true, that Sauron didn't touch the ring, there seems to be a massive disconnect in her mind between his influence on these other rings that might be made and the ring she's wearing. We also see here that all of the messengers who were sent with this important letter from Linden never reached Eregion, so Celebrimbor is still in the dark. It's in this time that Galadriel begins to make requests to bring a company to Eregion to check on Celebrimbor. Emissary at the Forge Meanwhile in Eregion, Halbrand has returned, but is initially denied entry. Mir Dania, who is Celebrimbor's young protege, feels bad for Halbrand, and I kind of wonder if she will continue to sympathize with him throughout the season. Eventually, Celebrimbor lets him in, and then Sauron presents himself as Anatar. Celebrimbor is honestly brought to tears when Halbrand reveals that the rings did indeed work 
which was really sweet. And then Halbrand is like, are you weeping? And he's like, no, no, definitely not crying while he's crying. Halbrand's pitch to Celebrimbor is that they need to make more rings and they need to give them out to men because Halbrand is, you know, masquerading as a king of men. So Celebrimbor initially refuses this until Halbrand then transforms himself as Anatar in this super dramatic scene. But before that, he has this really cute line and he says, Celebrimbor, are you my friend? To be kind of masquerading as someone's friend, I thought was funny and sweet. He says, I've never been able to hide anything from you, but my name is not Halbrand. Then we have the super dramatic scene where he's appearing in the clouds and it looks like he's coming down from heaven. And then he calls Celebrimbor the Lord of the Rings. And when that happened, I was like, you know, pointing at the TV like he said the thing. And he introduces himself as Anatar. Not only does he say he's Anatar, he says, I am your partner, no more, no less, a sharer of gifts, Anatar. I thought that was a good moment. So back to Galadriel and Elrond. They're having a rough time this episode, this whole season so far. Galadriel asks Elrond to travel to Eregion with her, but he says he doesn't want any part in anything that involves rings. He also responds with this great line where he says, a dog is steadfast and quicker to follow on a leash. Like he is so mad at Galadriel. In this scene, they have a lot of really well-written dialogue, which contextualizes Sauron's Halbrand deception. Galadriel says, Sauron used me, and under his hand I was played like a harp to a melody not of my choosing. And then Elrond responds with a lot of wisdom. He says, It was entirely of your choosing. Sauron looked inside of you, plucked the very song of your soul, note by note, making himself out to be exactly what you needed, the lost king who could ride you to victory. You gave him everything he wanted and then thanked him for it. Now he has done the same to Gilgalad and to every elf in Linden. Later, Galadriel is talking about a labyrinth and how she's afraid to kind of go into the labyrinth and she needs help. And Elrond says, there is no navigating it. The labyrinth is his. As long as you stay in it, you have already lost. He may well want you in a region. Then this is, this is the worst moment of not bad, like, but like emotionally. She says, please, Elrond, I cannot let him in again. I cannot. And she has tears in her eyes and she looks super distressed. And then the most emotionally devastating moment of the entire episode happens where we flash back to them, Halbrand and Galadriel sitting on their log. And it's when she said she felt it too. Then Elrond says, he never left Galadriel. In choosing to wear those rings, you have all chosen to become his collaborators. Elrond is not holding back in this scene. He's being brutally honest, and he's really, you can tell he's very distraught. He's very worried about his friends. He's also very, very hurt. This scene was really brutal because you can feel very strongly the pain that Galadriel feels because of Sauron. She is so severely wounded by the whole Halbrand deception, and it hurt a lot to see her so sad. Finally, we get to Elrond's decision. Elrond takes counsel with Círdan once again, and then at the end of the episode, he does finally agree to go with Galadriel to Eregion, but he will be as the leader of their company and not her. We also spend a little bit more time in Rune, where we meet a dark wizard and his acolytes. There's this temple where the moth ladies and the dark wizard are performing a ritual where this woman's hands are sliced open. The wizard then swooshes his staff around in the moths and it summons the dweller, which was really fun to see her again. And she has dialogue, which is exciting. The Mad Max guy, he sounds like Boba Fett when he speaks through his mask, which once again, I feel like we're watching, I almost feel like I'm watching a Star Wars show, but it's fun. He says he's going to kill the halflings, which like, that's pretty brutal, but uh, you know, let's see what happens. There's also a lot of discussion of a name for the stranger. The Harfoots are trying to give the stranger a name. He doesn't like any of their suggestions. And then he says, no one can give you a name. It is yours already. And when you hear it, you will feel your heart glow. So I think we can all assume that at some point during the season, someone's going to give him his name and then he will feel his heart glowing. And then they come to a well in the desert where they are discovered by Mad Max and his crew. These guys pull out their swords and then the stranger conjures up a giant sandstorm and then the Harfoots blow away into this sand tornado. 
overall thoughts on this episode. I liked this episode a lot more than the first. I do feel like we finally got cooking here. We got, we got moving. We're going a little bit faster. I am tired of wandering around in the desert with a stranger, so I hope that he finally arrives wherever he's trying to go soon. The dialogue between Elrond and Galadriel was the highlight for me. And it was a real treat to see the Dweller again and hear her speak for the first time because I know a lot of people loved her in season one. And so I think people will be excited by this. Like, I don't know, it felt like a surprise. By the end of this episode, I was very excited to begin episode three. And I'm glad they decided to release the first three together instead of just two since we haven't seen Isildur or anybody in Numenor yet. I'm guessing we'll see them next episode. Thanks for watching and let me know what you thought about episode two of season two.